G'day guys, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. If you're in the Roo Crew, you'll be taking this in on Thursday afternoon. If you're on the Rugby League Guru Podcast, you'll be getting this on Friday. Uh, so if you do, would like to join the Roo Crew, get exclusive content and get early content as well, make sure you go and join the Roo Crew. The description is in the link. The, the link <laughs> is in the description below. That, that's the sort of gear you come here for, <laughs> unreal stuff. Uh, Kat, Welcome back. We've got a number of news topics to get through today. We do. First of all, one, how are you? I am so well. And do you know what I find funny is more often than not, I've laughed before I've been introduced because <laughs> you'll say something where I'm trying to play it cool here, just trying nice to play and cool quiet. Like that. Yeah. But like, I, I can't do that. Like, when you say things like, the description is in the link. I'm going to laugh. <laughs> Always gets you. Two, what topics have we got today? Run okay. us through it. So we're going to talk about a few changes. Call it late mail. We've got Payne Haas, yep. Jaco Hastings. We've got some news about Damien Cook mm-hmm. and Sandon Smith for that mm-hmm. roosters Rabbitohs clash. Then we're going to delve a little bit into multicultural round and some stuff that's been happening in that space this week. So that's pretty much it. All right, beautiful. I've got a few bones to pick in there as well, which will be good fun. Uh, let's start with our first topic. Let's dive in to Payne Haas first. So Kevy Walters has confirmed that Payne Haas is out. He requires surgery and he'll be out from four to six weeks. Mm, yeah, this is a big loss for the Brisbane Broncos. Um, now, obviously, as I said, if you're listening to the Rugby League Guru podcast, the Broncos and Panthers would have already played by this point. I am expecting the Penrith Panthers to get a win here. Uh, watch that age like milk. Uh, but, yeah, I think Payne Haas, uh, well, I mean, in no shock to you guys as well, going to be a huge loss over the next few mm. weeks, Kat. And for me, it's compounded because, you know, obviously Tom Flegler's not there as well and they're sort of waiting for someone to step up into that role. I don't think anyone's really grabbed it in the first two weeks. Corey Jensen, uh, he's a very solid footballer, but I'm not sure if he's got that next level that he can go to, uh, like a Tommy Flegler, like a Payne Haas, one of these guys. Uh, Xavier Willison, though, he's the mm. guy that actually could. And as I said, you guys will know how many minutes he played in that game by the time you're watching this, unless you're in the Roo Crew. Uh, he's the guy that I think over the next few weeks is going to be really, really important to the Broncos. Um, I think that the other guys between you know Fletcher Baker, Corey Jensen, they're very up and down sort of footballers. They don't have the sort of high ceiling that a guy like Payne Haas does or a guy like Flegler did as well. So I really think Xavier Willison is going to be super important because we don't really know what the Broncos look like Mm, without Payne Haas. We've got a glimpse of what they look like without Tommy Flegler and it it definitely isn't as dominant. Uh, So without Payne Haas, it's going to be a massive, massive test. I'm expecting a huge few weeks from Paddy Carrigan. A uh, lot of expectation falls onto his shoulders. Uh, I think you'll see him take a lot more carries than what he usually does. I think he's going to have some very, very impressive stat sheets over the next few weeks. Uh, but, yeah, interesting to see how the Broncos go without him. And I'm, I'm just super excited to see Xavier Willison. Um and how he goes in this side because uh, they obviously play with the extra hooker on the bench and they're two out-and-out hookers in this team. So it's only a three-man forward bench. You get a HIA or something, an injury yeah. somewhere. All of a sudden it becomes really, really shallow. Uh, and you also, like, you, you look at Pat Carrigan, obviously played test matches at the end of last year, went all the way to a grand final. He'll play finals this year. He's got an origin series coming up. You've also got to be careful of his workload as well. Mm. So big test of the Brizzy Broncos, obviously compounded with Adam Reynolds being out as well. But Payne Haas missing for a few weeks. It's going to be very, very interesting. you got Panthers and the Broncos obviously coming off the grand final last year. Payne Haas and Fisher Harris look to be missing for a few weeks, the two alphas in those packs. Mm. It's going to be very interesting to see how they go, but also who steps up into their place. We know Mosley Otter is going to be the guy for Penrith, but Brisbane, I want to see who the other guy is. It's going to be really interesting. Yeah, to quote you, I hope whoever it is has big feet because they're big shoes to fill. Big feet, big shoes. We'll leave it at that. But, yeah, some big <laughs> shoes to fill up there at Brisbane. Uh, they've got a couple of clown feet up there in uh, Payne Haas's shoes and Adam Reynolds' shoes. So yeah. interesting to see how it goes. What's next? All right. Well, this is one I think that you are quite close to as well. Mm. This is a story that you're quite close to because you know Jackson Hastings quite well. And we know that he was on the bench for this clash, replaced by Jack Cogger, and it's made a bit of headlines, right? I, I guess this news around him apparently saying that he wasn't willing to train with the New South Wales Cup team and then Adam O'Brien has come out and said that is not what transpired. Mm. That's not the case with Jacko Hastings, but I'm going to throw it to you to kind of delve into it in a bit more detail. 
Yeah, and obviously off the bat, Jacko's obviously a mate of mine. Uh, but I think regardless of that or not, I do think it's really shit form by some media mm. outlets that yep. um, obviously heard a rumour, didn't get it confirmed. And to be perfectly honest with you, it wouldn't have been all that hard to confirm whether the New South Wales Cup Knights actually had training that day or not. That's what shits me. Like, And I guarantee you, Kat, and I said this to you yesterday, if it was Phoenix Crossland that went home, Media outlets, they know that doesn't sell stories. They yeah. know that's not going to get clicks. They know that Jacko will. Um, Jacko obviously has had his downfalls in the early parts of his career and, you know, he's had his fuck-ups. He carried on like a bit of a dickhead. Um, not my words. They're Jacko's words. He'll be the first one to tell you that. Go and listen to any interview Jacko has done over the last couple of years. He'll tell you that when he was young, he was cocky. He was full of himself. Uh, he's grown and learned a lot in that time. And, you know, if you, if you don't want to take anyone else's word, take mine. He is a good fella. Um, he is not what you hear from certain personalities in the media that hold a grudge. Um, He he is a fantastic guy. He is the last guy in the world that would say, I'm not going to training, fuck that. Um, 18-year-old Jackson probably would have done that, to be Mm. honest with you, and I I think Jacko would admit that as well. Uh, But he's learned a lot. He is a completely different guy. Um, I think it was last Thursday, Kat, we were sitting in there. He rang me. We spoke for about five or ten minutes. He FaceTimed you. Even just from your small interaction last week, does he come across as a guy that's going to spit the dummy and not go to training? Not at all. No, and and I think he he's showing real signs of leadership. Mm. He's very supportive of the emerging players, the younger guys. Any questions that you have about those younger ones, he's always happy to answer and kind of, you know, he show, he show, it shows that he's very supportive and, and I can't imagine this same guy saying, no, I'm not willing to train with the New South Wales Cup team. They didn't even have training that day. Yeah. I mean, this is what shits me with some media outlets and the way they go about things like like that that can really tarnish all the work he's done over the last few years. And, you know, not only was it like a miscommunication, it was just a flat out lie. Yeah. Like if you're going to publish something like that, just shit can someone like that, you best do your research and make sure you're at least in the fucking ballpark of being correct mm. instead of just making it up. Because I'll tell you what I noticed, Kat, a lot of outlets shared that story, shared essentially made up quotes that he refused to go to training. Did you see how many posted articles and stories about how, oh, no, we didn't do our job, we were completely wrong? I'll give you the hot tip, none of them did. Yeah, Which no. is what shits me an absolute stack and you might sit at home and say, oh, it's because you're mates with him. It just shouldn't be that way. No, I don't think this isn't just a Jacko Hastings thing. This is something that I feel comes up a lot. You do not like uh, any news articles that are out there to slander a player for no good reason. When the stories are misinterpreted or misunderstood, Mm. they're very – there, there can be a really bad ripple effect on yeah. that player, the, the mental health is issues that we yeah. see for a lot of these guys. And and I'm reading an article here and this whole original story about him not wanting to show up to training or leaving training early, all of that is still here. It's not been erased. So I think he has often been the scapegoat yep. because of his history, like you said, and those things, it's true. Sometimes our mistakes follow us around and we've got to do a little bit more to kind of mm. change our um, – our reputation and whatnot, but it is definitely unfair. And if Jackson Hastings was the dickhead that you, a lot of you think he is, do you not think that when there was blatant lies going around he would have come out and said something? Mm. No, he just put his head down, did his session he had to do that day and was ready to show up the next day and was at New South Wales Cup training and will run out at halfback for the Newcastle Knights this week and we'll, and I'll, get, I'll guarantee you this, Kat, he'll mm. run out at halfback in New South Wales Cup, he'll put his kit on, then he'll be sitting in the stands cheering on the Newcastle Knights and I guarantee you the number one person he'll be cheering on as well is Jack Cogger because yeah. he's that sort of a guy. Despite what the media wants to tell you, that's the sort of guy – the Jacko is. I've spoken to him over the last 48 hours. He's devastated, as he should be. Um, I personally think it's a little bit harsh. I'm not quite sure what the reasoning is behind this, but I know that he's spoken to Adam O'Brien. He understands the reasoning and whatnot. Um, and, you know, he'll be he'll be back bigger and better from this. I genuinely believe that. Uh, but, yeah, the thing that has shit me is the way that the media has absolutely shit can Jackson. They've taken advantage of a name that they know will get headlines. Um, it's turned out to be completely wrong and, as per usual, no accountability yeah, no has apologies. been taken whatsoever. Yeah, it's a real shame and that's something that we are not going to be uh, perpetuating in yeah. the CBA Centre of Excellence. Because I guarantee you next time it's something where it's mental health week or something, they'll all be fucking on top and praising yeah. about it. 
what happened this week? Where's yeah. the where's the accountability? You can't you can't just shit can someone uh, when you haven't done your research and you haven't done your job properly and then just completely ignore it. It's bullshit. Yeah. It's absolute yeah, crap. Exactly right. Because being benched is is already difficult enough, let alone negative headlines yeah. around it. All right. Speaking of being benched. Now this is one that you really you you were a bit nitpicky about this story. This mm, Damien yeah. Cook yeah. story because a lot of the news headlines have been saying Damien Cook benched. Sorry, Damien Cook dropped yep. when he is in fact benched. Yep. Slightly different. Damien yeah. Cook is still a part of this side, uh, but he will just not be starting for the Rabbitohs against Roosters this Friday. Once again, uh, a headline to grab attention. Damien Cook has not been dropped. Damien Cook has been put to the bench so that Havili can play the first 20 minutes and allow Damien Cook to play his best footy for 60 instead of 80. I'll give you the hot tip. A lot of teams do this. The Melbourne Storm, they have, in my opinion, the best hooker in rugby league. They do the exact same thing. Even when he plays rep football, they do the exact same thing. Penrith Panthers won the grand final 2022. Api Kurosawa came off the bench. He wasn't dropped. He was benched because it was what best suit the Penrith Panthers and the football that they wanted to play. Um, saying The article and the headlines, which have been on a few media outlets, unfortunately, saying Dam- Damien Cook's been dropped is complete and utter bullshit. Um, and I personally think that people out there would appreciate more explaining the process of why this would be happening and understanding the football side of it instead of just going for the headline of yeah. a player of Damien Cook's stature being dropped because it just isn't true. And I've got to wonder, Kat, if South Sydney weren't in the headlines right now and they weren't the team that was grabbing all the media headlines, would they have worded it like this? Mm, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a valid point that you make. I also think the, the funny thing is it's just a strategy play. 100%. If and it makes sense. resting a key player early in the game and having them yeah. for the second half or having them, you know, for the the 40 minutes that you need them versus having them for the first 40 minutes or the first 35 minutes, whatever it is. It's This is just a strategy play. It's yeah. hilarious when you read into it as though Cookie is like losing his position in South Sydney Rabbitohs when in fact they're kind of making I think it, it helps. more suited yes. to where he's at in his career. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, yes, where he's more suited at his career, but I actually think Damien Cook would have been better doing this the entire time. And you've got a guy like Havili who can play nine and then can be used as a middle forward later. You have a look at Damien Cook's stats every single week. It's 50 tackles and about four to six missed tackles usually. Uh, and the vast majority of those missed tackles come in the last 20 odd minutes when Damien Cook's ass is falling out the back because he's done so much work throughout the game. Mm. And keen South Sydney fans, you'll be able to address that in a number of big games over the last few years, it's actually been Damien Cook's defense at the back end that has cost you at times just because he's had to work so fucking hard. Mm. I remember uh, the grand, the prelim a couple of years ago where Josh Papaletti ran over him and the very back end of the game uh, to end your season there. It's happened on a few occasions. And personally, I, I don't think that's Damien Cook's fault. I think that if you've got a guy like Havili, you should, you should start with them and bring Cook off the bench. I think it makes... Complete sense. We see Queensland do it in state of origin. We've seen New South Wales do it. We've seen the Premiers do it over the last few years. Um, I think this is a really good play by South Sydney. Supercoach wise and all that, it's probably not ideal for us. But what you might find is that you get a fresh Damien Cook coming on after 20 minutes when the train crash period yeah. is over. Fresh, eyes up, getting on the front foot. This could be a masterstroke by JD, who obviously doesn't have many fans at the moment. Uh, but I, I really like this decision. I think it makes sense. The days of... Being benched is a bad thing and the shit players are on the bench mm. is just complete and utter bullshit and it has been for quite some time. You have a look at teams like Parramatta. They've got one of the best front rowers in the game, Junior, who's also their captain. They bring him off the bench because it makes sense. You get yeah. to square up um, at key moments of the game when fellas come on. Um, Melbourne Storm will do it throughout this year. Harry Grant will get benched on a number of occasions and it makes complete sense. So, I um, yeah, I, I just hate the wording around it. I think it's very attention grabby and I just think it's – it's kind shit of, it's, journalism. It's making a story out of what is essentially nothing. It's making a story of it's making it's making a negative story out of good coaching. Yeah, it's what like it's just ridiculous. Damien Cook is thirty two. I want to mm, say. I think so. Yeah, he should have been doing this when he was yeah. twenty eight, twenty nine, in my opinion. Yeah, but I think similar to this whole Jacko Hastings newsworthy headlines, the things that are going to get clicks. 
like you said, JD doesn't have a lot of fans right now. There's a yep. few things kind of in the media that people are talking about. He's ruffling a couple a couple of feathers, and you know, let's let's find a key player like Damian Cook and a, what we deem as a rogue decision and make it into another headline. But this is what it is. No one in rugby leagues calls a benching a dropping. It is just, especially at hooker, if you understand the game, you understand how stupid yeah. that is. But anyway, I've already given it too yeah. much attention. Yeah, I agree. We'll move on now. Uh, someone who has in fact been dropped due to injury yeah. is Luke Keary. Well, injury, HIA. Yeah, um, yeah. He's had a few of those, which is a real shame. But in his place, we will see Sandon Smith stepping up. And you're a fan of this move. Yeah, I am a fan of it. Well, obviously the move is because of a HIA and we want to wish Luke Keary all the very best days. Obviously had a lot of troubles throughout his career with HIAs. Um, I actually found out off Rando yesterday on About Even Cut, um, this is the first game Luke Keary's missed um, since 2022. So mm. uh, a guy that I would have assumed missed a lot more footy last year, but he actually didn't. He played every single game for the Sydney Roosters. So wow. that's fantastic. But obviously a HIA here. Um, the Roosters, they have got a very, and I, I think it's a good thing, a very good history of being very cautious with HIAs and whatnot. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Kiri miss a couple of weeks here if the Roosters are mm. going to be a little bit safe, especially if the Roosters are winning games during this period. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you what, this stand on Smith, I didn't know too much about him before last year, but the footy that I saw him play last year was incredible. I really was blown away. Uh, he came into the side late last year uh, and he played as the 14, sort of as the hooker came off the bench. And I thought in a couple of their finals games last year, um, the Rooster season would have finished two weeks earlier if Sandon Smith wasn't in the team. He came up with some huge plays. I got to watch him play in New South Wales Cup quite a bit last year. And uh, when I was over in Vegas, I was, I was actually talking to um, Connor Watson at one point. And keep in mind that Connor had just got dropped from the side so Sandon could take jersey 14. Connor spoke so highly of Sandon Smith and the footballer he is. And I sort of said to Connor, I said, look, I'll be honest with you, it surprises me a little bit that he's in the side and not you because – I think you're actually a hooker. I think mm. he's a halfback. And mm. uh, Connor said to me, oh, mate, he is definitely a halfback, but he's a very handy utility and 14 to have. So from watching him in the last cup, I personally think Sandor Smith is a much better ball player than he is hooker. And I think over the next few weeks, I think it's going to be interesting. I, I think there's a world where the Roosters could actually look better with Sandon Smith than with Luke Keary. And mm. that'll sound ridiculous. Luke Keary is a three-time premiership winner, a champion of our game. But, man, this Sandon Smith, there's something about him. He... Um, he takes the line on a little bit more than Luke Keary. I prefer his running game um, defensively, you know, much of a muchness, whatever. But I just think he can add a bit of spark to this Rooster side, which I think at times they can lack a little bit yeah. through Luke Keary. Uh, there will be moments where inexperience will show and you'd probably rather have Keary's experience. But I think the upside in Sandon Smith, I think it'll be very, very interesting over the next few weeks. So just want to keep an eye on because – if Luke Curry happens to be out for a month or so, which is probably unlikely, but given his history, I wouldn't rule it out. Mm. Man, I reckon this Sandon Smith, he could go on a bit of a run. Um, <laughs> there might be an interesting conversation. Yeah. I personally, I was a little bit surprised a couple of weeks ago when Luke Curry re-signed for another season. Um, I thought the Roosters would be looking at the future with Sandon Smith. That's probably the move I would have made. Hopefully, egg all over my face and I'm wrong and Curry ends up having a great season and proves me wrong because I'd love to see it for one of the good guys of rugby league, Luke Keary. Mm. But, yeah, I'm very high on this stand on Smith and he's going to be he's going to be a player that I'm going to watch very, very closely this week. Okay. Well, keep your eyes peeled on the old stand on Smith or should mm. I say the young stand the on The young Smith. stand on Smith, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was just another one of those <laughs> from me. <laughs> All right, let's delve now into something that I'm a big fan of and this is multicultural round. That is what round three is all about in the NRL. So over the week you would have seen the NRL did their official announcement at Parramatta kind of um, unveiling the meaning behind multicultural round which is celebrating the cultures mm. which make up the beautiful game. And um, there are so many nations which make up all the teams within the NRL as well. And so... Each individual club has kind of done their own homage to those things. But there was one in particular that I wanted to call out, which was the Bulldogs putting on cultural performances mm. as a team uh, on on their pitch, which was unreal. So at Belmore they had – they were doing the Lebanese dancing. They had um, all of their different cultural dances and whatnot. And I just thought this was another another moment that we should pay some attention to. 
Say what you will about Canterbury on field or, you know, recruitment or like whatever the hell you want to say about Canterbury and criticise coaching or whatever. Um, I think Canterbury do this sort of stuff better than anyone. I think they really do lead the way in the competition. And that's not taken away from other clubs. uh, But I think Canterbury really do a fantastic job of this. And Canterbury were doing a fantastic job of this before it was – before it was a priority mm. as well. Like I think now we put a lot more emphasis on this sort of it's stuff, bit, which is yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's a bit more of an agenda item these days. For Whereas, sure, yeah, yeah. like you said, Canterbury were doing it before it was yeah. this big Yeah, and I think, you know, one, one of the faces that I saw this week obviously has Emil Masri. Yeah. been front and centre of that yeah. for a long time. And I even remember like back in the day, um, like like early 2000s, like Canterbury you, you used to really, were already sort of getting around this sort of stuff in a big mm. way through Hasm and guys like w- Willie Tonga and, and these sort of guys. So, yeah, it's really good to see that Canterbury have carried that on. They've obviously carried the mantle of the family club for a very long time. Um, and it's obviously um, the Canterbury Bulldogs have a very multicultural um, fan base that are extremely passionate and have always been a very multicultural fan base. So I think it's unreal to see that Canterbury really lean into this stuff and what once again all clubs are doing fantastic yeah. things on this front uh but i think canterbury they've definitely led the way for a long time and they continue to i think they set the bar in terms of cultural expression yeah. and the effort that they go to to really share what is special about the cultures you look at yeah. Adokar, you know versus his time at storm i think he's really come into his own celebrating his culture yeah. with canterbury yeah. and I think that's important because that it's important for the generation of, of younger Aboriginal it's girls and boys who kind of see what he's doing and think I can achieve that too because I'm proud of my culture, he's proud of his culture. But as a Lebanese person, there's always going to be a soft spot for Canterbury mm. because you go to a game, it's Lebanese drums. Yep. It, there's no denying the influence that certain Lebanese players have had on that club. But then when you look at them now, there's so many emerging names that are yeah. Arab and it yeah. means a lot. It's I think it's important, and um, it the the team itself actually reflects a lot of the fan base, which is really cool. I know that um, our great mate uh, Tony Hayek, who's the mm. um, who's uh, the head honcho over there at Blue Wealth Property, I know that you know I hear it in his voice just how much pride he takes in Jacob Kiraz for the Canterbury yeah. Bulldogs and just how tough and hard he plays week in, week out, you know, the same as Hazamel Masri years mm. ago. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's fantastic what Canterbury do and I think it's, you know, yeah. I think as well the other guy that needs a lot of credit for this is Phil Gould, just how much he's leaned into all this stuff as well because, um, you know, Phil Gould comes from another time in rugby league where things are very different. Mm. I think Phil deserves a lot of praise for his approach and I think you can see a similar situation over at the Penrith Panthers too, which yeah, he obviously had absolutely. a hand in. So shout out to him. Uh, but, yeah, some fantastic things going on this week on that front. And yes. I think you, you, you're you going to mention some other clubs with posts and stuff. And oh, Something's playing on my laptop. Something's top. playing. What's, something's what's playing. doing? Uh, well, speaking of the multicultural rounds, yeah. Adi Sevilla has unveiled these beautiful boots that are a collaboration with ASICS. I'll pop a photo right here for you. But, I mean, you you sent these to me, mm. so I know you're a fan. But is this not just such a beautiful piece that they've created? Yeah, it, it's unreal. I love it. And, look, I, I obviously, you know, I, my, my culture doesn't go all that much deeper than just being Australian. So, I, you know, it's hard for me to really speak about the cultural significance of it, mm. um, of like what it represents and everything. But, man, if you go and have a look at um, Artie Surveyor's page Sorry, once Kat stops turbo. throwing things around and flipping tables as she does, uh, <laughs> if you go and have a look at um, his page, he's, he's actually had a collab with ASICS and with the New Zealand Warriors too, yeah. which I love to see. And you can just see the passion uh, that the Warriors – boys have for um what, what what he's done there man he's doing some special things out of his like I, I don't i don't follow union all that closely but yeah. man the impact he's having on the field but also off the field is just unbelievable which is great to see and to see i, I do you know like i i know a lot of league people hate union but i love crossovers like this yeah and i think it should be the way to go about it i think culturally too to, you know, to speak to culture, yeah. the union union in, in New Zealand and whatever is obviously such a big sport and then so is the WAS and, yeah. and league and so there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of connection between the players and all you have to do is go through one of Artie's videos to yeah. see how many league guys are commenting and interacting with his staff. 100%. He's 
he's a voice to those guys as well. Yeah. And to your point around um, what he's doing in the game, his openness about mental health, mm. his content creation and his – I guess he's very transparent and vulnerable with his his what he's willing to share online. Yeah. And I think that stuff's important too. You don't see a whole lot of that. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, as I said, I don't follow Union too closely but him – Whenever I hear him on podcasts or, you know, occasionally he does some um, um, stuff with ice around the corner here and stuff, like always very impressive. Just the way he carries himself, just his perspective on things, the way that he approaches things, uh, a very, very impressive human being and great to see him getting involved with this sort of stuff. And I, you know, I think it's only going to evolve as we move into the future. You know, like we, we've, we've seen other, you know, a lot of the uh, um, Indigenous boys in the NRL quite often have like boots that have been painted. And yeah. all. I, I know that um, down at Hello Sport they actually brought um, – one of Josh Adokar's boots wow. that has the – and it's – fuck, it's cool to hold and look at. Like just so much goes into it and it just tells such an amazing story. And, um, yeah, you know, like rugby league, you know, probably 40, 50 years ago, the idea of like multicultural rounds or something like that would just seem like it was from another planet. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm so glad that it's just so normalised. It's just such <laughs> – like uh, not an average thing but it's just an expected thing now that we appreciate this sort of yeah. stuff which I think is such a positive and I think it's only going to grow and our game's only going to become more and more multicultural um, yeah. as time goes on as well which is unreal. Yeah, I agree. I think you summed it up perfectly and we've got a, a great younger generation of players coming through that represents so many different cultures yeah. and that's the future of the game like yeah. you said. So. Good stuff from ASICs. Yeah, love that. Absolutely unreal. So, yeah, going to be a really exciting round this one. Uh, I'm sure that there'll be, uh, you know, plenty of clubs will be doing plenty of things and whatnot. The last thing I just wanted to touch on, Kat, and I just thought about it then. I actually didn't even th- think about this until I saw it the other day. But, uh, um, you know, we, we spoke about um, Tommy Gilbert the other day. Yeah. Have you heard about this? Do you know what no, I'm going to say? I don't no, know where cool. this is so, going. I, I didn't even realise this and I was at the game the other day, didn't notice it and I actually saw it on social media last night, got it sent to me. Um, because Tommy Gilbert's had such a tough run with injury and it's been so brutal, everything he's been through, uh, the Dolphins actually have TG13 on their jersey I now. I actually did see Yeah, this. which I think Sorry. is really cool. I think that's unreal to appreciate um, how much of a tough time a player's had. And, you know, when, when we're on the KO live stream, I actually can't remember if it was on the live stream when we were talking to Ray Stone after, but when we brought up Tom Gilbert, like poor old Ray Stone, like he, you could just tell how devastated mm. he was for him and how much he means to that team. So I thought that was just a nice little touch by the Dolphins who um, from getting up there the other day and just experiencing their club and their community, boy, they're ticking a lot of boxes up there. Yeah, isn't that nice? Ooh, just <laughs> You didn't see that because I hadn't changed the camera yet, but I just – Hit myself with a microphone, guys. I'm Cat just wore a left jab from a microphone. I, I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to injuries, just for the record. And also, I've knocked Tom, Tommy Turbo down twice, and I don't know if it's a bad omen. Anyway, moving on. I think yes, 100. They're a new club. They they can learn from the mistakes of the the clubs in the past. Yeah. We say new club. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. This particular team it yep. represents something very new in the NRL. They, they have the opportunity to, you know, set the bar for yep. what a club should be doing in these spaces. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if I was a new club coming into the NRL, which I'm sure they will be over the next few years, like you're obviously going to be compared to the Dolphins and, mm. man, they've set the bar high. It all started at the top with Bennett. Yeah, it all started with Wayne Oss and, yeah, yeah, all the players I've recruited and everything and, yeah. you know, all the things I've had go against them as well. And, mm. um, yeah, it's been very, very impressive. So shout out to the Dolphins. Um, that'll do us, Katmandu. That is it, guys. Multicultural round this weekend. So many good games. We did our tips on the Roo Crew. So definitely go check those out if you want to see who we think. Yeah, yeah, obviously win. the Roo Crew guys absolutely flying the Guru Patreon. So if you would like to come and join the Roo Crew, stack of con- content during the week but also just over the weekend I just essentially vomit all my thoughts in there yeah. from every single The amount game. of times I look over and he's like, hold on, I'm just doing something for the Roo Crew. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah look, how much it, are you it's, doing? It's $8 a month, uh, $2 a week and – I mean, if you can go in there and have a look at the amount of content that's in there uh, and tell me that you're not getting worthwhile, uh, I'll show you a liar. Uh, There is just so much content in there. It is incredible. You have a look. I think we're 
uh, two weeks in and there's 70 different bits of content in there between um, videos, between podcasts, between uh, just a couple of random posts here and there, a couple of videos from just around the studio, a little bit, bit behind the BTS. scenes sort of stuff. Yeah. A bit of BTS. Um, and then, of course, we're going to have some stats dropping in there very soon as well, which I think for you super coach players uh, is going to excite you a lot. You're not going to want to miss that. I think it's going to be a must-have for all super coach players. So stay tuned there, Rue Crew. Uh, the link is in the description if you want to check it out. My advice, jump in there, check it out for a couple of days. If it's not for you, so be it. Hit the frog and toad. But I guarantee you, if you're a footy nerd, which if you're watching the Rugby League Guru podcast, I can almost guarantee that you yeah. are. Yeah. It's uh, it's going to be the place for you, yeah. I think, Kat. And uh, if you do decide to leave, we are notified. Yeah, we we're do, notified. We do get the name of the person. We've got a hit list. Left and there's no reasoning. So you might hear from me. I'm like you. the guy in Billy Madison with the list, the list of names. Yeah. And I'm, as they're going, I'm putting the lipstick yeah, through them. Exactly. Coming for all of you. Watch yourselves. All right. That'll do us. Thank you for joining us once again, legends. Enjoy your weekend of footy and we will see you on the rapid review brought, brought to you by Grilled. Remember, it is Mad Monday on uh, Monday. So if your team wins this weekend, you can go in and get yourself a two-for-one burger. If you've joined the Relish uh, loyalty group with Grilled, we'll actually put that link in this description as well if people want to sign up to yeah, get themselves easy. ready for that. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see you on Monday, legends. Cheers. Bye, guys.